So um, indeed, I'm talking about models for supply chain management, or I've actually put quantitative models for supply chain management, because that's what I do. So what I want to do is actually spend this time to tell you a little bit about my field, because I suspect it's one that many people don't actually know much about. Um, so that's me. I am the director of the Center for Supply Chain Management. And yes, we do have a Center for Supply Chain Management here at the University of Auckland. And I'm a deputy director of outreach and industry engagement for Tapunaha Matatini Corps. So what I want to do is just define supply chain management and also what do I mean by quantitative modeling. And then I'll give some examples from my own research in terms of, uh, you know, in that field. So that's a supply chain. That's your basic supply chain. Uh, you've got goods flowing, although of course we can also talk about services. We have service supply chains or value chains. And we have information. And so that's really what research in this area is all about, is flows of goods or information, how to make them more efficient, how to make them more effective, uh, how to coordinate different players that all are acting within that whole supply chain. So within that field, what I do is modeling. So my favorite quote there by Box, which many of you might know, all models are wrong, some are useful. So that's my goal, is to actually come up with useful models that inform how we should actually manage our supply chain. Um, so there's lots of types of models. In fact, there could be dot, dot, dot at the bottom here. But what I do is mathematical modeling. So the idea is we start with a real world problem, something on operations and supply chain management. And we formulate it in terms of assumptions into a mathematical model. We then analyze that model hopefully analytically, but if you can't, numerically, we get some results and conclusions, and that will then tell us, hopefully, something about the real world. So how does my research flow into the, research, the real world? Well, sometimes it's working directly with companies, but more often it's actually through the MBA classroom. So my research and other people like me lead into insights on how you should actually manage your operations and your supply chain, which we then tell practicing managers, and hopefully they actually listen and go out and apply these principles that we come up with. So as I say, I want to give a few examples, uh, just to make this a little more concrete, because when I say mathematical modeling, what do, you, what, what do I even mean? So I've got one of my equations down there, just so you can actually see that's what it, you know, a mathematical model looks like. It's an equation, and each of those terms represent things, and I'm not going to go over them, obviously. Um, and this is a stochastic model, because it's got a normal distribution floating around in there. Uh, but the application is really what interests me. And in this particular example, we were thinking about hospices in the US. So there was a lot of anecdotes out there about bad behavior by hospice managers. Uh, based on how they get reimbursed by the US government uh, through Medicare, which is their seniors' me medical re reimbursement scheme. Um, so we, what we were able to do is we were able to show mathematically that indeed the incentives are there for bad behavior. Um, so it's not surprising we saw some of this bad behavior. And what do I mean by bad behavior? I mean enrolling patients who weren't actually terminally ill, kicking patients out just before the end of the year so that they didn't show up on the books, those sort of bad behavior that you wouldn't want hospices to actually partake in. Um, so fine, we showed that there were incentives for bad behavior. What are we going to do about it? We were also able to propose a new reimbursement scheme that was much more on a rolling horizon basis that actually uh, eliminated those negative incentives. So a lot of the work I do and a lot of the work in supply chain management is around incentives and getting those, those parties to actually play nice together. Um, as you might imagine, if it's around incentives and how do people work together, then game theory often is another tool that we use. So this is an example of an inventory game. You can think of Coke and Pepsi uh, stocking their stocks on Walmart's shelf, because Walmart actually tells them to make the decision. They don't actually tell, place orders with them. Um, and so we have, for anyone who's done game theory, you'll see we have response curves and we have an equilibrium. And we basically look at that competitive equilibrium when if it's out of Coke, you might actually switch to Pepsi. Or if it's out of Pepsi, you might actually switch to Coke. So that competitive equilibrium game uh, under the presence of switching from stockouts. So that's another 
inventory model. And then the last supply example I want to give is a supply chain model. I have a Marsden grant. Raw log exports from Tauranga, are they a necessary consequence of New Zealand's position at the ends of the world supply chain? Um, so this is looking at this question of all these logs are being shipped off shore, is that a problem? And traditional supply chain strategy theory would say it's actually a natural consequence of the fact that we're so far from market, so therefore the natural supply chain strategy is an efficient supply chain, an efficient supply chain is not a value, is not one where you've got uh, value-added products. That's obviously a very negative story that I'm telling you there. So what we want to do and what we are doing is modeling these, these trade-offs quantitatively. Can we actually get a lot more concrete? Where are the opportunities? Um, and then we're also looking at some of the stats NZ data on this to say something empirically. Um, so, so those are some three concrete examples of, of my own research. Uh, broader in, within supply chain, these are some themes th that the Supply Chain Research Center is looking at, but you can see they're all quite related to what I've just been talking about. We look at collaboration and incentives, games, etc. We look at risk management, so stochastic models, uh, sustainability, and then just networks and infrastructure. How do you actually move things from here to there? Thank you.